Now, what about um, this business of um, investigating the world? Now, again, you, you say this, this comes out of a, a, a biblical worldview. Um, is that not what science is, 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 claims it is doing? It's, it's, it's objectively investigating the world without a bias. Well, wow, there's a thing. Uh, <clears throat> their bias is materialism in quite a lot of cases. We even have admissions from people like Richard Lewinton who said that we, 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 science tolerates just those stories uh, and, um, and counterintuitive uh, theories because we have a commitment to materialism, that matter is all there is, and because we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. This is what Richard Lewinton said, yeah. very uh, clear case of materialistic bias. Uh, Richard Dawkins has a very clear materialistic bias. Um, I have the biases of the, of the founders of modern science. Hmm. And if these, if these <coughs> modern scientists were backed into a corner, would uh, would they not admit that that uh, that's your bias that your bias is, is is that of the founders of modern science? Well, I mean, I think it's <clears throat> see historians of science are not necessarily those who are practicing science. A lot of the evolutionary propagandists are not experts in the history of science and how it was founded. Now, when you say propaganda, you mean that? Oh yes. Uh, yeah, now that suggests uh, some kind of a conspiracy or some kind of a mm. uh, a subculture <clears throat> that uh, wants to win the world. Well, I mean, whether it's a conspiracy which implies act of conspiring is, is one thing, but certainly there's a very big, much a shared worldview and open admission, uh, admission by people that they want to uh, convert um, uh, Christians over to their materialistic way of thinking. Uh, unfortunately, that what they'll use is compromising Christians to do that. You, you, you uh, <clears throat> remind me, as I'm reading your books, uh, of... Uh a kind of a pit bull. I mean, you, you, you really go for the jugular. I mean, you, 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 and, and you're almost brutal in your treatment of, uh, of those who uh, are in denial of the facts. And I suppose that's, you know, your nature and that's how God has gifted you. Mm. But when you are, you know, by yourself, you know, Jonathan Sarfati, mm. by himself, with or without his wife, maybe on your bed at night, uh, all alone, uh, what are the thoughts that, um, um, the surface the most. Well, see, even even the the, uh, in the directness that I use is generally to the to the issues and not to the person. And it's very no, no, rare. I know. It's yeah. most cases, it's not personal. But yes. I mean, I, I would I would not like to be on the on the wrong side of you, mm. <laughs> because uh, frankly, your your grasp of uh, of the facts is uh, is astonishing. I uh, you know I'm not telling you this. I'm not flattering you. I just okay. I'm, I'm amazed at it. But uh, what. Uh, what, what, what intrigues you, you know, when you're not writing about something like this or uh, pointing out the flaws in someone else's uh, thought processes? Well, I mean, uh, the thing is, uh, when you think of even the early creeds, they were there. They, they were there to refute errors. And, of course, uh, from this refutation of error, they presented uh, great truths of the Christian yeah. faith. The Nicene Creed was there to refute the Arian heresy, which denied the deity of Christ. Uh, see, what I'm doing with my refuting books is presenting a positive case that the, the world is created, the Bible is authoritative, and using the errors uh, to point people towards the truth. Now, when you refute Dawkins, does, does he ever respond? Uh, I think uh, his uh, disciples respond. He tr tries not to. I mean, uh, it's interesting that the objects of my refutations have refused to debate me, for instance. Hugh Ross, does he? Uh, does he, he will not debate me. He won't debate you. He has re uh, refused uh, to debate me. Now, I've interviewed him, and, yes, I, okay. uh, and I, uh, I, I did so as objectively as, uh, mm -hmm. as I'm trying to do with you. Yes. Um, I get the impression sometimes that uh, the as, as they're irrever irreverently referred to, the short earthers, or, or the young earthers and the lo mm -hmm. long earthers are kind of at each other's throats and don't like each other very much. Is that true? Well, I think there is some uh, definite rivalry there. Uh, his, uh, Dr. Ross's ministry is based on the idea of, of the Big Bang and millions of years. Right. He says uh, as a teenager he, he came to accept the Big Bang and therefore he says he realized the days of Genesis 1 must be long periods of time. So he even admits that it was his Big Bang belief that led to the, the, his old earth belief. You see, uh, that's what he says. Now what will he and others like him do when the uh, Big Bang theory is... Um on, on, you know, collecting dust on the shelf of history and something else has emerged that is much more um, believable to the scientific community. Well, that's a big problem because, uh, in fact, there is a lot of secular dissent from the Big Bang. I mean, you have the um, 
the dozens of people writing an open letter which uh, points out the Big Bang can't survive unless you have fudge factors like uh, inflation, which goes faster right. than light, dark matter, dark energy. You need these factors and the, fine, the tweaking of the parameters to, to come out with the right results. And so what happens when the secular community um, abandons the Big Bang? Then a lot of the Christians who've used Big Bang as an apologetic, uh, they, they'll be without much foundation Well, there was left. real excitement when Dawkins came out with A Brief History of Time, and, and he spent a lot of time in that book, as I recall, mm. describing the Big Bang, but he left open the door to the possibility of there being a creator. And, and, and a lot of uh, Christians jumped on this as mm. uh, at least um, partial uh, affirmation from, from, uh, from Hawking that, mm. um, uh, did I say Dawkins or Hawking? Hawking, that, um, you know, there was a creator. Well, actually, what I recall from the first book, The Brief History of Time, is his what place then for a creator. That's his most famous uh, little yeah. quip from that book. And he's written a more recent book, which I, I critiqued in detail yeah, last I, I just uh, read year. That book too. Right. I critiqued it on our website, and, and he's really getting into philosophy outside his area and, and trying to deny uh, the reality of a creator. But what he's done, he's based his view on a very... Um, um, a fringe sort of model M theory, which is based on another theory of string theory. See, it's a house of cards ready to crumble. But he bases all sorts of philosophical um, uh, pronouncements on a, a very weak scientific read. Now, now Hawken wrote that book uh, in uh, collaboration with another author whose name escapes me. You're melodding off or something. Right, this, right. Yeah, exactly. And this M theory thing intrigued me. They're, they're talking about 11 dimensions. Yeah, that's, um, again, um, <clears throat> That, that's to try to make certain things work, to try, right. to try to solve certain problems. But I mean, even a lot of physicists are very skeptical even of string theory on which the M theory is based. Now, um, what's, your, what's, your, what's your perspective? I mean, our, our time is running, and I, I, I should have three hours with you, but uh, what, what's, your, what's your perspective for the average person on, on faith and, and practice? Um, if you were to um, describe the three or four or five critical DNA elements in a life of faith and, 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 and the practice of faith, what, what would they be? Well, um, that's a very broad question. What, what are you after here? Sorry. Well, I just, uh, I, I mean, uh, the average person is listening to you and saying, whoa, this, this is way beyond me. I'm going to believe him. I'm going to trust him because I know he's a, a, a thinker and has uh, done his homework. But, you know, I've got to get up uh, tomorrow morning and go to, go to the office. I've got uh, children who are out of control. Uh, I'm not sure I like my, my, my church. My pastor seems to be chasing rabbits down a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And I'm feeling uh, kind of discouraged and a little bit depressed. And, and yet I know I want to serve Jesus and I want to, I want to trust the Bible. And, uh, you know, what, what, what hope do you have, you know, coming out of this very vast experience of yours, mm -hmm. you know, for, for the average viewer? Well, I, mean, I think a lot of the thought, what, what I'm talking about is not that difficult, really. Uh, I mean, you can uh, raise it up to a level, just like Bible study itself. I mean, the, the, a little child can read the Bible and understand the basics of salvation and, and a good life. Um, of course, theologians can be looking at the Bible for all their lives and still uh, not really uh, getting more than the surface thing because it's got the mixture of depth and simplicity. Um, now the stuff I do would have uh, this, you can go as deep as you want to. I wouldn't claim to have got anywhere near the... Um, um, complete, complete knowledge. Sure. Um, but I think people should um, be able to know the basics. Uh, that, that cre creation, if, if nothing else, um, creation and, and Genesis underpins everything else about the Christian faith. Yeah, what you're saying is you can, if, 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 if you can't trust the Genesis account of creation, you can't trust anything in the scripture. So that's what I you're think saying. you've got a problem because every yeah. doctrine of the faith you can trace back to Genesis 1, the virginal conception, you can trace back to Genesis 3.15 where the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent, the right. seed of the woman, he had no human father. And so you've got even that sort of doctrine, you've got the doctrine of, of marriage going back to Genesis 1 and 2. Jesus quoted from those uh, two chapters to, mm -hmm. to teach uh, about marriage as a man and a woman. You have uh, the Apostle Paul teaching about the resurrection and the gospel going back to the events of Genesis 3, of, of the first man, Adam, bringing um, sinning and bringing physical death into the world. So Jesus, the last Adam, brings resurrection. And I think a lot of gospel preaching these days uh, it seems to be a bit rootless. It, it actually um, uh, forgets the foundations that Paul uh, uh, built before preaching it. I mean, what sort of gospel presentation doesn't even mention sin? Yeah. Without which, why do we need the good news unless we have the bad news of sin? That's a reality. But if we haven't got a creator to whom we are accountable, uh, then the word sin has no meaning. Yeah. Your books are just uh, full of uh, riches. 
Yeah, and I, I, I've read uh, all th uh, about three of your books at least, and I'm totally impressed. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Look forward to having you on again sometime. Well, I like that. Thank you so much. Well, thank you too, Jim. Thank okay. You.